My name is Stephen Veter. I am a Mellon Postdoctoral Fellow at the Museum of the City of New York. AIDS at Home is a new exhibit at the Museum of the City of New York that looks at the history of HIV and AIDS as it played out in people's domestic lives and in their everyday lives from the 1980s to the present. And it aims to provide a new lens on how we think about the history, the ongoing history of HIV and AIDS in the city and raise larger questions about housing, caretaking, family, um, and healthcare as they play out in the city especially, but also um, in the United States more broadly. Sometimes some of the more personal stories that were playing out in private have been lost. And I wanted to create an exhibit that could tell those stories, that could tell some of the stories that um, maybe haven't gotten as much exposure, um, and to get into HIV and AIDS as something that happens in a very intimate and personal way and what, and what that means. Um, and I wanted to do that through, not only through art, but also through archival materials. One decision we made early on in working on the exhibit was that it was not going to be strictly chronological, and that rather because HIV and AIDS is an ongoing history, that it was important that it be thought about more thematically. And so, you know, home can mean many things. The word home connotates, connotes a lot of possibilities. And so we wanted to kind of break that down. And so the first room is about caretaking, about, you know, the early um, and ongoing responses around kind of what does it mean to care for somebody who's sick? What is, you know, what does self-care mean? And the next room is housing, but, you know, we often don't think about how housing and home sound like different things, but actually people use the word housing when home becomes unstable. And so it was a way of exploring also how home became unstable and how activists responded by creating new forms of home and housing. And the final section is about family and to think about how HIV and AIDS activists and artists have rethought what family means and how that history continues. One of the first pieces that I um, asked, asked to borrow for the exhibit was a painting that you see right when you come in by Hugh Steers called Bath Curtain. Um, it's, you know, it's a very large canvas that depicts um, two men around a tub, one in the tub, his face kind of obscured by a curtain, and the other holding his hand at the, si at the side of the bathtub. And that was the piece when I started working on the show that really made me understand that the art actually could tell the social history, that um, there was so much emotion and so much stories in the artwork that um, could so powerfully and quickly convey to people why we need to think about HIV and health and illness in the context of home. That, so that was a really um, crucial piece. There's also a beautiful piece by Hunter Reynolds that's of, um, it, you know, it's all fo photographs of the AIDS memorial quilt that was, that was first laid out in Washington, D.C. on the National Mall. And, you know, all of these photographs that are then quilted together. And I love that because, the, you know, I love the idea of taking something that's kind of a monumental size like the AIDS memorial quilt and bringing it down to scale. And that for me was kind of a metaphor for how you can take a history that's too big for a museum and bring it down to scale and make it more personal. Another set of works that really are powerful to me are photographs by Luna Louise Ortiz, um, who Luna um, was very, is very involved with the house ballroom scene in New York. And now he's a youth educator for GMHC, but he first started taking up photography when he himself was diagnosed with HIV as a teenager. And his photographs bring us into this larger world of queer and trans youth in the 1980s and 90s. And we actually went back, you know, Luna and I going back to his negatives to find those photographs and pick them for this exhibit. There, because this is such recent history, there are just lots of stories that haven't been told and there's a lot of artwork that has not really been seen for a long time. And the exhibit in many ways is a form of community engagement as a way of accessing these stories and working with people to give them voice. We worked with a great designer, Marissa Martoni, to come up with the space of the exhibit. We were thinking a lot about the kinds of apartments that people, you know, artists were living in the 1980s in New York, kind of railroad apartments in the East Village. And we wanted to create a kind of domestic feel. And that was partly to create a sense of intimacy in the space, to create a space where people were going to feel comfortable accessing some of these stories and memories and feel closer. You know, there are a lot of kind of hidden corners. There's a lot of, there's a, a piece in the show by Laurie Grinker that's kind of a room where you're kind of brought into the experience of being with someone, of being a caretaker. 
I think that the exhibit aims to be to bring people into the emotional story of HIV and AIDS and about health in a different way. We have wallpapers for every room and that also is again, the you know, one thing also in the design is we, we selected and worked with artists to select wallpapers for each room of the exhibition, which was also a way of you know, defining the space and making it more domestic space, but all of the art also has a deeper story behind it.